In this video, I want to talk about a particular type of transformation of time series, which is known as the Coic transformation. So if we start off here with a ordinary AR process, so we have that xt is equal to rho times xt minus 1 plus epsilon t, where epsilon t is just a standard IID error. And this is just a standard AR1 process. If I take this xt minus 1 term over to the left hand side, we then have the xt minus rho times xt minus 1 equals this error, epsilon t. Okay, so why have we done that? Well, it turns out we can write this a slightly different way if we define something known as the lag operator. So I can write this as 1 minus rho times this lag operator, which I'm going to call L, times xt, and that's still equal to et. And now I can define exactly what I mean by the lag operator. The lag operator, when operated on a time series xt, just returns the value of the series in the last period. And if I was to look at the lag operator squared, that essentially would be just applying the lag, lag operator twice. So that would just be equal to xt minus 2 when it's applied to xt. So that's how the lag operator works. And it turns out that we can actually kind of treat this lag operator just like it's some algebraic value, even though it's actually an operator. It turns out we're allowed to do that. And if we're allowed to do that, then what we can do is we can actually rearrange for what xt is in terms of this error term here. So xt is equal to this error term et divided by 1 minus rho times l. Okay, so why have we done that and, and where can we go from here? In order to figure out where to go from here, we need to take a sort of sideways step and look at geometric series or sort of remind ourselves of geometric series. So a geometric series has a particular sum s, which is equal to the first term a plus the first term a times some constant ratio r plus the first term or the second term times r again, so we get a r squared. And if we have an infinite geometric series, then the infinite sum looks something like that. And it turns out, I'm not going to prove it here, it's very easy to prove that the infinite sum of a geometric series exists, and it's equal to a over 1 minus r, assuming that the modulus of r is less than 1. And it's easy to see why we impose this, because essentially if r was greater than 1, this series would quickly diverge because I'm getting r squared, the next term is r cubed, and hence the sum isn't actually converging to a value, it's, it's diverging. So we require that the modulus of r is less than 1. But notice in writing the, or finding this infinite sum of geometric series, this actually looks relatively similar to this term over here. So perhaps what we can actually do is we can treat this term on the left hand side as an infinite, infinite geometric series and it turns out we can. So what we can do here is we can write that xt is equal to epsilon t divided by 1 minus rho times l which is the same thing as well the first term the sort of matching up these two expressions is just et. The second term is essentially this first term times r, well r in our example here is just rho times l, but l needs something to operate on. So actually we kind of write this the other way around, so we just have r times a. So the second term is actually plus rho l times et. The third term is just going to be a times r squared, so or r squared times a, so it's just going to be rho squared l squared times et and etc. on for an infinity. But we have already defined what the lag operator is, so we can just let the lag operator operate on this particular time series. So we're just going to have that xt is equal to et plus rho times et minus 1 plus rho squared times et minus 2 and in con continuing ad infinitum. And if we write this a little bit more compactly, we can write that this is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of rho to the i et minus i. 
Okay, so what have we done here? We've taken a process that was an AR1 process, so that's what we had up here at the top, and we have converted it into essentially a infinite moving average process. And when we do this, this is what the, we define as the Coit transformation. And it's another way of viewing AR1 series essentially as an infinite sum of error terms or variables which we don't actually have observations for. So what's the intuition as to why we can think about an AR1 series equivalently as an MA a sort of infinite series? Well, if we think about what the effect of, let's say, let's say this XT here was sales and ET here represented advertising spend. If advertising spend went up a bit in a given period, that's going to have an instantaneous effect on the sales in that period. But because of the fact that sales are related to what they were in the last period, it's also going to have an infinite effect. It's going to have an effect on the next period, which is in turn going to have an effect on the period after that. So it's going to propagate forever. So that's kind of what an AR1 process ensures happens. But equivalently, we could just think about our effect of advertising in terms of the direct impact of advertising on sales. Essentially, advertising has a direct impact on sales, which is given by ET, plus it has a lagged effect on sales, which is given by rho, where we're requiring here, importantly, that rho is less than one in order for this sort of equivalence to be made because of the fact that otherwise we cannot write down that these two things are equivalent because the actual sum doesn't converge. So the idea is that we've got a bit today or a bit of sales which has gone up today due to advertising today. Then we've got a term which is due to the advertising yesterday times a little bit. So perhaps this is a half, perhaps rows a half. And then we've got 25, 0.25 times the amount of advertising two days ago, etc. ad infinitum. So when you see it like this, then you can, or well, when you write it out in this explicit form, the MA infinite form, it's easy to see that advertising has an infinite effect on sales, but it's implicitly that which is implied by an AR1 model. So they're exactly equivalent with one another.